Now I want to bring in Middle Eastern expert Rahi Devdergam. It's always good to see you. Thanks for being with us. You know, I was remembering back in uh, February, I think it was the 11th, and Hosni Mubarak uh, went down in Egypt. But how surprised are you by what you've seen unfold in very swift fashion over the last several hours? Extraordinary events there. Indeed, they are swift events, but uh, it's also been a lot of good work by the uh, opposition, by the rebels, and by NATO. This is what brought this to a boil right now. And of course, by the very terrible, grand mistakes of uh, Muammar al-Qadhafi and the people around him, he was given the chance to get a way out, a safe way out, and he didn't want to, and I don't think he would want to now, uh, wherever he is. I think he's most likely in Libya, within Libya. But the collapse of the regime is a very important event for the whole Arab world. It will resonate other places. Remember, when we spoke about Egypt, it was a different evolution of events. The same thing with Tunisia. Now, with uh, uh, Muammar al-Qadhafi, it brought about the strength of the Libyan people, the power of the will of the people, and that will absolutely leave its mark on the other developments in different parts of the world, be it in Yemen, in Syria, I think the leaders there are not sleeping tonight. Well, and, and you do have, obviously, in the short term and potentially the long term, the instability that is left because of the government services that will not be available, the infrastructure, and obviously the NATO bombing, which has also taken its toll, and, and this transitional council will have its hands full, to say the least. Uh, but put it in the, in the larger picture of the Arab Spring and, and what mm -hmm. the significance is. Well, listen, in Tunisia, there was an infrastructure, more of an institution that in, uh, more of institutions that in, uh, existed and still exist in the country. So the transition there has been much more uh, safe, if you will. It's, it's more normal, whereas in Egypt it's still turbulent, but it will bring about a transition to something that is new and good. And in, uh, in uh, uh, Libya, it is tremendously horrifying what Muammar al-Qadhafi had left behind. There are no institutions, there is no infrastructure, but the transition the transitional council has proven to be amazingly surprising and able at building itself and putting together a very good policy. And don't forget that the defections have been quite important because these are people who have been in policy making, they have been in, who know the country actually, and who could be very helpful for the next good thing for Libya. It will take time, maybe turbulent times, but I believe the surprise, the beautiful surprise of the beautiful people of Libya is really what we should be celebrating. And, and obviously, uh, there are also a lot of questions about what had happened to Muammar Gaddafi's sons. We do know that uh, his son Saif uh, had been captured and that his presidential guard had surrendered. You know him? Yes, I do. Actually, I'm, I, I was very good friends with Saif al-Islam al-Qadhafi. He was the hope of the reformers in Libya, those who wanted to make change peacefully in Libya. He was their hope. And what happened is very sad, actually, because when the events took place and then he sat there and he waved his finger in their faces, he became his father's son and he lost credibility. It's a very sad faith for Saif, and he probably just made the wrong call all the way along because he was the hope of the Libyans for reform, and now he is being pursued by the ICC, by the International Criminal Court, to, as, as you know, a man who had committed crimes against humanity. I think this is a call of history that, uh, that will remind others, hopefully, not to make the same mistakes. Unfortunately, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing people learning the lesson in Syria. We're not seeing leaders in Yemen learning the same lesson. I think they just keep thinking that something will come their way and change the winds for their favor. And you know, the people's will. What happened this year in the Middle East is amazing. In the Arab world, something new has been born, and that is only five, six months old. Imagine. Uh, Rahida Dargam, who's going to stay with us throughout this Rahida hour. Rahida Dargam here still. And, and what's your take on, on the major challenges that are, that are going to immediately present themselves in the coming days? Libyans don't need money assistance that they need is not really in money. They need uh, building institutions. And I think the Transitional Council, they have very able people and they have been preparing quite a lot. And I know many of them, many players in this council. Tell us a little bit about who makes up this council. Well, it is some of them we know and some we don't because some Benghazi that had been liberated, to use the word, they came out clearly. But there are some areas in Libya where representatives from these areas were not uh, able to be pronounced and declared because of safety reasons. But they are able and they are um, 
they, they have proven to it. Imagine again, it's only months, and this has all happened in the last three months that they have been able to put together this transitional council that has gained recognition by many uh, players and many countries that has been in touch with many uh, governments in terms of uh, the continuity of, say, um, oil contracts, say, uh, building infrastructure. So they didn't want to rupture everything. The fact of the matter is that Gulf Council cooperation has been in the forefront of bringing this issue to the Security Council, and the Security Council also brought it around to give aid to the authority to make this, to help make this happen. Rahida Derga making a very good point that they've had three months, perhaps, to consider what they'll do with a fall after 42 years of the rule of a brutal dictator. So we're going to continue to watch what's going on in Green Square, in Tripoli, what's happening elsewhere in Libya, and continue to ask the question, where is Muammar Gaddafi at this hour, while clearly his regime has crumbled around him. 27 past the hour. We'll take a quick break and be back with more here on MSNBC. In the words of President Barack Obama, we have been witnessing a pivotal and historic moment in Libya. Earlier today, the rebels, with very little resistance from pro Qaddafi forces, were able to move into Tripoli, and there is euphoria on the streets in Tripoli, in Benghazi, in villages all across the country. This latest manifestation of the Arab Spring. I've been talking to Rahida Dergam, who is a Middle East expert, and, and Rahida, you have to wonder, I mean, obviously there are many immediate problems ahead for how this is all going to play out in Libya, but it has to make uh, the folks in Syria a little bit nervous right now. Oh, they must be very nervous in Syria because the downfall of Muammar Gaddafi has been one thing they're expecting and watching, is it going to happen, is it not? It's been almost a stumbling block in the process of the Arab Spring. So now that it's clear that the end of Muammar Gaddafi's regime is practically guaranteed, I'm pretty certain that the folks in Syria are very nervous. I think in Yemen, it's already been a de facto uh, resolved situation because the President Ali Abdullah Saleh is now in Saudi Arabia, virtually under house arrest. So he's not going to go back and make trouble again. But in Syria, they feel that they could make a bloodbath. However, Libya proved not to be a civil war. It is not a civil war. It is a transition. It's only five, six months. And a lot died, unfortunately. And the same thing will happen in Syria. A lot have died. Hopefully, it will not become a civil war, although I think the leaders normally, those who are clinging to power, like to bet on that. They like to play that card. They like to say, if I'm out, it's a civil war. The new voice of the Arab world is saying, you're wrong. We're right. Rahida Dergam, thank you so much. And, and clearly the conflict that has gone on for almost six months in Libya has been the deadliest of all these countries that we have seen in the region. Uh, but tonight, shouts of God is great and jubilation on the streets of Libya. Our coverage will continue after this. It is the early morning hours of Monday now in Tripoli, and there are celebrations going on everywhere. It has been a historic several hours with what is clearly the fall of the Muammar Gaddafi regime. However, the fighting is not over. We are getting confirmation from Associated Press reporters. Uh, while checkpoints have been set up at various parts of the city, there are still small pockets of Tripoli where there are snipers, pro Gaddafi snipers, uh, where there is still some battling going on, but a statement was issued by the President of the United States and also by NATO talking about the fall of this regime. Uh, let's go back to some of our experts and talk a as we uh, close out our coverage about the key things that they'll be watching for over the next 24 to uh, 48 hours. Uh, Michael Singh with a White House advisor to former President George W. Bush, what will you be watching for now? Well, you know, everyone obviously is going to be focused on Muammar Gaddafi. Where is he? Uh, but in a sense, you know, that may take quite a while to resolve. Remember how long it took with Saddam uh, for us to track him down and find him. I think the key thing to watch here is security. You know, can security be brought, brought, brought to Tripoli? Can these sort of pockets of resistance that remain throughout Libya be quickly overcome in the wake of, uh, of this, uh, this event in Tripoli? And finally, can, they, can Tripoli be integrated into the governance structure which has been established in Benghazi by the Transitional National Council? 
I think if, if we see those three things, it, it could be looking up at least in the short term for Libya. Michael Singh, thank you. Colonel Jack Jacobs, what will you be watching? Uh, whether or not the, uh, the new government can actually take control of the country, I doubt if it will in the very short term. I think there's going to be continued fighting, and there'll be, uh, there'll, there'll be plenty of fighting as some of the forces, the rebel forces, start uh, taking revenge on people in the outskirts. All right. Thank you so much, Colonel, for coming in tonight. I'm Rahida Dergam. I would be watching whether NATO really finishes the job because NATO had taken its time getting the job done. I'd be watching what the Libyans will do with Saif al-Islam Qaddafi and his brothers, whether they will turn them to the ICC, the International Criminal Court, or not. And, of course, whether that would mean Muammar Qaddafi included will be delivered to the International Criminal Court. And I would be looking at the Arab reaction. The Transitional Council is very important to prove itself internationally and locally, but I would very much be looking at what the Libyans would say, what the Arabs would say, governmentally and on the level of the, uh, 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 the people who have made this revolution. I think it's a very important event for the Arabs, for right. the Arab world, and they will be watching where else does it resonate. Rahid Ergam, thank you so much, and thanks to uh, all of our experts who are with us throughout the evening. We're going to continue to watch these developments, but it is clearly a pivotal and historic night for Libya. The rebels have broken through, controlling much of Tripoli, but where is Muammar Gaddafi? I'm Chris Jansing. Good night.